Hey guys, welcome out to the range. Today I wanted to show you something that, um, yeah. I wasn't sure that I wanted to do this. You'll see why in a second. Um, but I think I will. Quite often when people start talking with me about about what they want for their, for their go-to gun and so on and so forth for a travel gun, they say, well, I want to go with 300 blackout, seven and a half inch, eight inch barrel, whatever, which is essentially what this is. And, um, and I say to them, stick with 556. Five, this is 556. Five, I should have clarified that point. This is 556. Five, and I say to them, stick with 556, five, and here is why. And then I explain to them this. 5.56 five, 5 millimeter is the round that you can find anywhere. You can go anywhere, you can barter, you can beg, borrow, or steal this round from anybody. Um, or rather, I should say, beg, borrow, or barter this round from anybody. I, I like that. I like the ability to know that I can source ammo, 223 or 556, from most anybody. 300 Blackout, for all the years it's been out, it still has not really gone mainstream. And it probably never will, because as long as the military isn't doing something, then the world isn't doing it either. Which is why it's interesting that they've totally gone to a new round, which is a horrendous... Okay, here's my theory. Here, here's my, um, yeah, here's my theory. The military, U.S. military, has gone to a new round, a new rifle, suppressor, optic. That gun is so god-awful heavy and a heavy hitter that we have, we have now made for a very ineffective military. And I'll leave it at that. So anyways, what this video is about is... People keep saying to me, uh, I recently released the first video on a series that I'm doing on seven and a halfs, and this is going to be a perfect video for that. Uh, people keep saying, oh, well, I, I want to go with a side folder. And every, every time I say this to the people, don't go to a side folder. Remember, guys, I'm a, I'm a rifle um, manufacturer. Do not go to a side folder. Um, I used to, I don't build that much anymore for, you know, commercial, or not commercial, I don't, I don't build for sale anymore. Now I just build for friends. But what I say to people is don't go to a side folder because they don't age well. Uh, what ends up happening is the, the side folder is here. You grab it, you swing it in place, you bring the gun up. You collapse it, you fold it over, you put the gun back in the bag where it goes because a, a gun like this would, yeah, a gun like this, this is an 18 inch bag from Viking Tactics. I'm um, sorry. Vertex in conjunction with Viking Tactics. So there is Vertex, there's Viking Tactics. So this bag is capable of housing this gun with a side folder. And which is why they've made it a little on the chunky side, this way. Um, and I'll do a review on this bag, but anyways, the point that I'm getting at is, so yeah, this, this allows you to have a bandolier fits neatly in this pocket right here. An extra sidearm would fit here, Velcro, and as, as you guys know, Vertex does those Velcro panels where, uh, the Tactigami, where everything just kind of like holds everything in place. So you could have your sidearm here, your bandolier here, the actual gun itself folded over and stored in the bag. And yes, the, the, the answer to the quick question is, yeah, I really do like this bag. The shoulder strap is a freaking crap show. Shame on Vertex and, and Viking Tactics for doing this piece of garbage. And I'll cover that in a later video. But yes, um, these Tactigami pieces allow you to um, lock your weapon in place and then the side folder would just go over. And then you just close it up and off you go. That's fine. But here is, here is the however. However, side folders don't age well. As a rifle builder, I built with some of these for people, and and I'm not going to give you a name because there are several out there. Um, side folders and the really ultra collapsing PDW type shoulder stock dealy. So it isn't just side folders. Anything that takes the equation that is the AR-15 and changes that right there. Anything that changes this 
is going to create malfunctions over time, whether they be internal or whether they be the joint. Or uh, I was reading the comment section the other day because, yeah, guys, I'm always in the comment section. Someone made a comment about the transition piece on the side folders where they begin to rust horribly here because the BCG is violently going back and forth. And unless you are meticulous about cleaning these weapons when you shoot them, shorties tend to barf quite badly, uh, this one included. They tend to barf a lot of stuff into the upper. It's just the nature of the beast. And you end up with a weapon that begins to corrode internally very quickly. So every person I keep saying to them, don't go to a side folder. You're actually better off taking this weapon and breaking it down between the between the upper and the lower and you're better off laying this inside of this bag like this strap the upper in place leave your mag in place so that when it's in the bag so basically the idea is you open the bag take that receiver and you lay it up here I'd have to move these <clears throat> but you take that receiver and you velcro it in place up here you put your little optic cover in place your lower receiver goes here and the reason you leave the mag in place is that's polymer, that's polymer, and that's polymer. So when they, when these three polymer surfaces come in contact with aluminum, 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 they don't cause any damage. But if the mag is not in place, and this were to shift, then this anodized aluminum comes in contact with that anodized aluminum. It doesn't really do much, except it just kind of mars it, and it creates a shiny spot. If you don't care about that, rock on. If you have a problem with having a loaded firearm, because technically this would be a loaded firearm, fine. So take the ammunition out and just put an empty mag in here. But you want to have a barrier between your lower and your upper. But look, I mean, look what we've got going here. So that's that. This bandolier drops into this pocket right here because this is a relatively deep pocket. So this actually folds into here. And I've already done it, guys. It folds into here and zips in place and now you have a nice compact setup for going in and out of hotels and whatnot when you're traveling but the fact of the matter is remember now you've relegated yourself to having your shoulder fired weapon broken down so guys when it comes to a active killer which is what our role is as a as a tier one citizen okay this is now off the table actually watch this video you'll understand why It's a five second clock, guys. You literally, it's, you watch that five second clock roll and everyone goes from stunned to, ah! You have five seconds. You have to use the chaos he has just created to track him and drop him before five seconds elapses before people start moving on you. So based on what you just saw, five seconds. Remember that fight ended in three seconds. One and two and th that guy was down. Four and five, everybody starts moving. You don't have time. You barely have enough time to figure out what has just begun to happen, then to reach for your bag. Then you might get your zipper about here, and now the fight's over, okay? The only time you have is what Jack did. He basically got his, I think his sidearm was here. He got it out, he tracked the threat, and he dropped the guy from roughly 15 yards in three seconds. And he's like 60-something years old. God bless that man, because the Holy Spirit was absolutely over him that day. But the point I'm getting at is, this is a pipe dream. This is never coming out of the bag. You might have just enough time to get your sidearm out, but now you're a potential threat because the church security team doesn't know who you are. So take that, in, take that under consideration. The last thing you want to do is be wearing this in that kind of environment. That's another layer that you have to consider. So this is why I say to people, forego the side folder. Just leave it alone. If you're worried about vehicle attacks, have this laying behind you on the floorboard and throw a towel over it. Uh, you know, I know that I know that our industry is overrun by manufacturers who are making things, and it's the job of the manufacturer to sell you an idea. And I get that. And then people buy into those ideas. And a lot of money gets spent, and a lot of support gear gets purchased. And in many cases, people don't know what they don't know when they're buying stuff. 
And guys like me and channels like this exist solely for the purpose of the dissemination of truth. I bought this. Everything I have on, I've paid for. No one sent me, the only thing that was sent to me free was the optic from Trigicon. Everything else I've paid for. And guys, if I didn't have an optic, I would run hard sights. You guys have seen me run hard sights before. Hard sights do not even concern me, ever so, I mean, just not even slightly. You can bracket a person, forget the sight post, you can bracket a person inside of this shape and hit them. You can bracket, and I've done this, you can actually bracket a person inside of an optic that's off or just a rear sight alone and your, and your thumb on the front of the gun. I've done it. I actually did it at a Larry Vickers class years ago. It was a law enforcement military CQB class. My Mark 18 um, had an optic that had been in for service the week prior and I didn't realize the batteries had run down. And so I got the thing zeroed just in time to make it to the class. It was at Blackwater. And uh, we started working and I brought the gun up at mid-morning. My optic was gone. And I, and I was like, oh crap. And I mean, you're under time constraints. So basically I brought the gun up, the optic was out. I took my thumb, I raised my thumb like this so I could use this in conjunction with the window to let me know the orientation of the weapon. And guys, no joke, the groups were here, the groups were here. And then when we broke, 15 minutes later, I raced to my truck and prayed, please God, let me have extra batteries. And I did, because I usually have extra batteries in one of those types of cases. But, um, yeah, I lucked out. So, the point is, less is more. And when it comes to your, your, your shorties, your defensive shorties, guys, bypass, seriously bypass the folders, they don't age well. Um, the weapons that are designed with shorter setups really hit hard, which is why for years a certain manufacturer who will remain unnamed, every time that they would do their ads, you'd see people doing a and the gun would come to the shoulder, and as they would pull the trigger and the gun would go like that, they would cut to the next shot. And it'd be like well-dressed people pointing guns. And every time they would bring the gun to the shoulder and they'd fire their first round, you'd watch the gun accelerate violently and their face would pop like that and they would cut to the next shot. Because the manufacturer did not want you seeing that their rifles were pounding the piss out of people. And recently I was at a class and the student had a rifle from that manufacturer who will, will remain unnamed out of respect. And I actually noticed that the gun was gassed properly. And when I asked the student, he said, no, I haven't modified this gun in any way. Why do you ask? And I said, no, never mind, just wondering. And I left it alone. So I've been, I've been hitting this for a long time, and manufacturers are finally beginning to listen. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, guys, less is more. Don't complicate these weapons any more than they have to be, because they're already complicated enough as it is. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, because I know you do, because uh, the comment section goes crazy and it becomes Hot Pocket Central uh, with the, uh, the keyboard commandos telling me what they think. You know what you You need to respect me. <laughs> As always, God bless you all. Thank you so much for your sling purchases and for your donations that keep this channel independent and free of corporate intrusion. Um, God bless you all. Get those guns on practice. Have a good one.